this man would be wearing a pager if they were still a thing. They are still a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that. Jay. Hi, everyone. Is this good enough for you, Christina? Yeah, you're happy with the. You want me to? Higher, higher. Sorry, I thought you were pointing at the camera. It was a, it was a weird moment. Yeah. <laughs> that was Grant's important search and retrieval. Yeah. All right. I'm James, I'm here to talk about the joy that is hot potato. Um, it actually does bring people joy, so I'm not just making that up. So, yeah, please bear with me. All right. Uh, so, I'm James. I work at Catalyst as a network engineer, a Linux sysadmin, and a people manager. Uh, and I have very strong opinions on everything monitoring and waking people up in the night. So, if you would like to talk to me about this later, that would be great. I have lots of reckons. Yeah. Uh, so, Jumping straight into it, what is Hot Potato? So Hot Potato is not a monitoring system. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that it is, and that's really bad because it's a brand new project, effectively, and people think that, so we're working on it. But it is a message broker that sits in between your monitoring systems and your on-call people. Um, so it's effectively a web application with an API built with Python and Flask, uh, and it has a funky database called CockroachDB and RabbitMQ for queuing messages. Um, it tells you things. Its whole purpose is to tell you things, and it does it quite well. Why does it exist? So this is where we get to the fun part of the story, now that we've got the easy bit out of the way. So we traditionally at Catalyst use these. I joined Catalyst, yeah, yeah, cool, sorry. Um, three years and 11 months ago, and on my first day, a whole bunch of people put pages down on my desk. I'm like, welcome to the team. Like the 1950s. Yeah. Um, so we were in a unique position at Catalyst where we did a lot of work for the teleco providers in New Zealand, and obviously there's only so many of those, and we couldn't rely on things like SMS or phone calls necessarily to get to our on-call people, so we needed something somewhat out of band from the rest of the nation's infrastructure. So we ended up using pages, and I've been trying to kill them ever since my first day working here. That is an example message saying that a Postgres database server has gone down, um, just for the record. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, the pages were fine. Sorry, just recapping in my head. Um, until one day, Spark decided they were gonna turn the network off, uh, which greatly disappointed the fire service and all our ambulance services and pretty much every emergency service provider in the country, and us. Um, so. We'd already been looking for some time, obviously, to try and find a way to replace the pages, but we hadn't quite gotten there yet um, until this announcement was made and suddenly we had to do something about it quite quickly. It turns out we had to do something a lot quicker than we realized. Um, so the pages, because we wanted something completely out of band, we were using dial-up modems to talk to modem banks at Spark to send pager messages. Sorry, Christina, I'm not looking up high enough to see you all the time. You just gotta throw something at me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so dial-up modems over traditional phone lines, surprisingly old-school system for an old-school method of delivery, but it was reasonably reliable until this happened. Um, so yeah, one day we came into work um, early one morning and we were getting no carrier messages on the modems. Um, the modems were able to dial the Spark numbers and then nothing would happen. Um, and the pager, no worky-worky an actual quote from our work request for that happening that morning. Um, so after about three hours of attempting to get hold of someone at Spark, it turns out they were quite busy that morning, um, we discovered that they had started decommissioning the modem banks to move to email or API-based delivery without telling a lot of people. Um, it turns out there was some confusion over who was paying them money to use the pager network, and we were unfortunately left off that list. Yeah, um, so all the messages over the pager network are completely unencrypted and anyone with, say, a $4 software to find radio from AliExpress can read them. That's, 
It's always been that way. I can't confirm or deny that. Yeah. It's only relatively recently that the police have never got encrypted to your radio, wouldn't And only in some places. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Wellington is one of them. <laughs> have we started again? Or? Yeah, cool. All right. So, yeah. Um, recapping again in my head where I was. Uh, yeah, so they decommissioned some of the modem banks and they found that because people hadn't been advised of this or reconfigured things and they didn't quite have a full list of customers, that there were a lot of modems and systems sitting out there trying to send pager messages, some of which had been cut off and were just trying the same messages that had been queued for a very long time over and over and over again, um, which was effectively denial of servicing the remaining modem banks that they had. So they initially told us it wasn't a fault because every so often we could get a pager message through and I'm talking one every five hours if you tried continuously uh, from four different modems on four different phone lines. Um, so not a fault because it works intermittently, but yeah. We got there in the end and they eventually told us that they had started decommissioning modem banks and that we needed to move to an API or email-based delivery. Um, email-based delivery unfortunately wasn't very good for us because when you're monitoring your mail servers, you don't really want to tell people that they're broken for, you, you get where I'm going. Yeah. Um, so. That was the day that we decided to make Hot Potato. We hadn't actually named it Hot Potato at that point, we were just calling it the pager replacement. Um, but we very quickly came up with the idea after people were seen throwing pages at each other. Yeah. They weren't working, it was fine. So, uh, on that day, in three hours one night, uh, that night I built the very first version of Hot Potato that we rolled into production the next morning. And we've been building on it ever since. Yeah. So what are the goals of the project? Now that we've got the fun stuff out of the way. Um, we want it to be highly available, which is something we obviously didn't have with pages, despite our best efforts. Um, so really, we only want it to go down if we have much bigger problems, like every city in the country has been leveled by a massive earthquake or volcanoes going off. And we just actually don't care if your servers are broken anymore, that kind of thing. Um, which we have somewhat quite conveniently managed to achieve. Uh, we want to foster alert reduction, so we want people to not get woken up in the middle of the night as a like main goal of the project. So we're all about giving visibility of the things that are happening, which Jamie will talk about slightly later, hopefully. Um, and just making the lives of on-call people better. I mean, on-call people love getting paid to be woken up, but they also love sleep. So. Uh, we want to be able to support any monitoring system. So at the moment, we support Nagios free, a single one, and a single two um, through an API. And we're adding support for things like Prometheus now that Kubernetes is becoming more popular and all that kind of thing. So there's an API. Anything you can write a script to talk to, we'll be able to talk to it. But those are the ones we traditionally care about at Catalyst. So that's what we have. Uh, we have 18 servers around the planet talking to Hot Potato at any given point. So. Uh, and we want to be able to support any method of telling people that things are broken. So at the moment, we support Pushover, which is an app for iOS and Android phones, which we're currently using as our main method of delivery. Um, it's nice in that it will continuously nag you until you tell it you've seen things, which is better than the pages where traditionally you would send the thing and it may never get there. And you have no way of knowing it never got there other than finding out later when the customer complains that the website's been broken for two days that, yeah, weekends. Um, and we also have SMS in there because some people like the notifications. Um, we also don't want it to get in the way. So there's nothing worse than certain alternatives to hot potato where you get woken up by a thing and you have to spend 15 minutes trying to tell it that you've seen that it's trying to wake you up and then get to actually fixing the thing. Um, we have 15 minute SLAs with customers, so that's kind of out of the question. Which comes into why don't we use other paid service or other open source solution for this. Um, SLAs, they couldn't meet our requirements. Uh, we wanted something that was actually open source that we could give to the world and the world could use without having certain obligations under some other not quite open source licenses for the only alternatives that were out there. Um, which were effectively, it's open source but you have to pay us to use it, which was a traditional fantastic license. 
Uh, we also don't want to publish all our customers' server information somewhere in, say, China or the US or one of those countries that might, say, target a government department that you had as a client, though. This has been a bit of an iffy point given that pages also send things in plain text, um, but that's why we try not to use them anymore. Um, how does it look? Um, so this is the main page of Hot Potato from a screenshot from today. Um, as you can see, we had a GitLab, ser GitLab server with low disk and a Rocket Chat server with low disk, and that was most of today's pages. Um, we tried to keep the user interface quite simple and clean for people. It's broken down into two main categories, which are notifications and then a servers page, which is all the monitoring servers that send things to it. Um, so you can go and check the status of those or have a look at the things that are paged and there's copy paste buttons and things for people who are creating tickets at 2 a.m. so they don't have to type stuff out. Um, rough guess we would say just having this interface and those buttons and things alone has probably saved us quite a lot of hours. Um, we were talking about it probably being 2,000 hours over five years saved just from having those buttons around, which uh, whatever you pay on-call rates overnight for is quite a significant amount of money. So, yeah. Um, with the notifications, you would get a nice message on your phone like this, and it would make annoying noises and things, um, and then you would go into it and you would see something like this, um, and you have the nice acknowledge notification button and push over as well. Um, I was going to do a live demo, but I decided that would be a terrible idea in a 20 minute window. So if anyone does want to have a look at it afterwards, I'm happy to show you on my laptop. Um, we can still use the projector, but you know, yeah. Um, thanks to all our contributors so far and Jamie who was in the room, who's one of them. And yeah, um, the slides will be up on the website and Twitter and I'm available for questions if anyone wants them or wants to ask one now that we kind of had a few during the mic breaks, so. Yeah? Um, so it's a iOS and Android app. Um, it's effectively just a thing that sits in between um, Google and Apple's push notification services and just charges you a small fee every month to send unlimited notifications to people. Um, so we did actually talk to the Signal developers. Um, we found that their API docs were incredibly out of date uh, and that we couldn't reliably send messages at the best of times between certain people on the team. But when we spoke to them about it, their response was, if you give us a bunch of money, we'll help you. Um, and we'll consider updating our public API docs. Um, and we weren't particularly keen on that. Um, they weren't willing to do things like um, tell us when they were changing certificates so we could actually trust them and things like that and not just their certificates changed, we can't talk to you anymore until someone figures out what it's supposed to be and that kind of thing, so, yeah. Sorry. Hi, I'm Jamie, I also work here. So, um, in the last few days, I've been working on this, which is something that's been sitting um, near the sysadmin since, uh, since before I joined the company. Um, and it used to be, this is the sign saying how many days it's been without a serious mishap. And um, we classify a serious mishap as a sysadmin gets woken up, uh, well, a sysadmin is paged after hours, and they don't like that. Uh, <laughs> Um, and just in the last few days, well, a, a few weeks ago, the person who made this and wrote the firmware for it and ran the API server for it shut down that server and also doesn't have the code for the firmware. Um, so I've been rewriting it and integrating it with Hot Potato. Um, so it is uh, ESP8266, which is a little microcontroller that also has Wi-Fi. So it's just on the Wi-Fi network making HTTP requests to normally hot potato, but in this case, a file, a static file on a web server that I'm also editing from my phone, apparently. Um, so you can just see, see there, it's been four days since a serious incident, and yeah, this is normally an API endpoint, and oh no, something bad happened. 
and now everyone can see that and be sad. And if I... If I make the web server respond with a 404, then clearly hot potato is broken, and now it's sad, and all the sysadmins know that. <laughs> Thank you.